Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back. My name is Leon F and this is my channel DIY Beauty on Purpose. <music> DIY, I am going to start with this strip of drop cloth. It's about five inches thick. I cut it off of a very long piece of drop cloth that I had left. And then I'm going to take some pillow stuffing that I usually have on hand from a Walmart pillow. And I'm just going to start kind of eyeing out how long the strips that I need will have to be. So once I have the size that I needed, I'm going to use that one to cut out five more strips. Let me feel your love again. Out and running round in circles, screaming out your name. Take me to a different place. Once I had the strips that I needed, now I'm just going to crisscross them as evenly as possible, but it doesn't have to be perfect. This is because we're going to create a very rustic, kind of very natural looking pumpkin. Once I have them crisscross, I'm going to take the pillow stuffing and I'm going to place it right in the middle. I actually ended up taking more than what I thought I needed, but it turned out perfect. So now I'm going to start wrapping the stuffing. Basically, I'm going to start with the most, the strip that is highest. So the ones that is right on top and I'm going to wrap it and then I'm going to keep moving forward. So then I'm going to go to the next strip that's in line and then the next one. This is all making sure that I am holding it on top and that I, all the uh, stuffing is also being covered with the strips. Kind of makes sense just to see it as I'm saying it. <laughs> But um, I'm going to show you step by step so that way you know. And I'm actually going to show you in real time so that you know it doesn't take long. And there's no special trick. You just basically have to hold and wrap. Now, now after everything is wrapped, it's time to just look around the pumpkin and make sure that everything is tightened. Everything's pulled appropriately upwards. And then if you see any that are a little loose, don't worry. We're going to fix that here in a minute. I'm going to take this piece of drift stick. It's just a stick that I had on hand from previous DIYs. I'm going to place it right in the center. And then I'm going to take some jute twine and I'm just going to wrap it a couple times around the base, making sure that I do have the stick inside of that um, string as well. So I want to tighten not just the drop cloth, but the piece of stick as well. So I'm just going to tighten it with uh, simply a simple knot. So you're going to see here that I'm going to start cutting the excess uh, drop cloth from the top. Now here's the part where you want to go a little slowly. You don't want to cut too much. You want to close or cut slowly knowing that um, you can always cut more if you need to. So in this case, I was going pretty slow, just kind of looking at the pumpkin, seeing is that enough? Do I want to cut it more? And in my case, I wanted to leave it a little high. So I didn't cut too, too much. So here's the part where you're going to tighten anything that's left loose a little bit. So anything that's kind of bowed or you could just see that it has a little bit of a opening, just put a little bit of that of hot glue on the top and then just pull the drop cloth over it and just hold it until it dries. And that way it just looks natural and pretty. Now I'm going to take some thicker jute twine and I'm just going to wrap a couple pieces around with simple knots. This is just to add a little bit more texture to the pumpkin. Just the two of us and we can stay up all night. Kissing under street lights. Doing what we want to. Doing what we need to. I am now going to take this twine that I got at Dollar Tree. And it's beautiful. It has orange and red berries and I think it's stunning. I'm just going to cut out a piece of about maybe 14, 16 inches long. I'm going to wrap it around the stem, twist it, and then I'm going to curl the ends so that they look nicely put together. And then I'm just going to adjust them in the way that I think is going to look pretty. And that's it. Obviously, you can add whatever embellishments you want. You can add leaves. You can add flowers. You can add whatever you want to a pumpkin, obviously. However, I always tend to move towards the simple side and I think just leaving it like this was absolutely stunning. I love the way this pumping turned out. I love that it's so natural looking but yet very very festive. For the next DIY, it's going to be a very simple one. We are going to take uh, just this jute twine and I'm going to thread it into this very thick needle. And then I'm going to start threading some beads, a combination of natural wood, 
brown and white fabric beads i'm just gonna keep the pattern oh and these little acorns i got at hobby lobby in a pack of like a whole bunch of them and i just grabbed i think it was four or five of the white ones and i'm just gonna start threading them in the pattern that i chose in this case i chose three natural one brown acorn brown white 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 and then repeat repeat <laughs> <laughs> um, you can do whatever pattern you want, obviously, but this is just a pattern that I chose because I wanted to keep that natural wood tones and um, just natural neutral colors, but also um, have a little bit of that dark brown in there. So anyways, this is all I did. I just kept threading and um, kept the, the pattern as closely as possible. I'm gonna drill holes on two pine cones that I got at Hobby Lobby. This came in a packet of a whole bunch of them. I'm just gonna drill a hole starting from the bottom upwards and obviously be very careful. And it held up pretty good. It was a thin hole, but still I was surprised that only one of the tiny little like leaves fell off. Then I threaded the jute twine with the same needle right through the hole and made a knot. And this is gonna be my ends to the um, bead garland. Obviously, you have made probably like you've probably seen a million bead guidelines or bead garlands being made on um, videos. But I wanted to make my own with a little twist of a fall um, theme. And I think it turned out absolutely stunning. I love, love, love this one. For the next DIY, I'm going to take this piece of leftover paneling that I got at the hardware store. It was already this size. It was pretty long at one point, and it's been cut through projects here and there. And I'm going to cut two pieces equal size. I didn't really measure the size, but if I were to guess, I think they're about nine inches long. And then I'm going to angle the corners at a 45 degree angle because we're going to make some tags. These tags are going to be really easy to make. And all you have to do is just make sure that you have either a piece of wood or paneling and um, cut them to whatever size you want and then angle the corners. I'm gonna sand down the edges just to make sure there are no splinters because when you cut paneling, boy, do you get tons of splinters. I'm also gonna drill a hole with the biggest drill, drill bit that I have here available because I want it to look like a tag. I wish they were putting it a little bit bigger, but it's okay, it worked out fine. Now that everything's smooth, cut and sanded, I am going to Gave everything just one pretty heavy coat of Rust-Oleum chalk paint and the linen white. Once it was dry, I did sand him down pretty heavily for a bit of a distressed look, but I forgot to film that part. But it was no big deal. You've seen me sand before. Basically, I took my electric sander and I just went at it, focusing on the edges. Now, after it was sanded, you can see them right there on the bottom of the screen. I did cut out uh, the word fall as well as a little pumpkin using my Cricut and I'm just going to use them as stencil and I am going to place the fall on the top uh, tag and then the pumpkin on the bottom one. These tags are going to be stacked on top of each other and they're going to look really cute. Once I had the stencil on, I, I did stencil it using a makeup sponge as well as antiquing wax from Wayland. I am now going to stack the tags as I want them to look. Before I glue anything, I am going to mark on the back where the tag is because that way I know where to place some hot glue. And that way I'm not over hot gluing or not hot gluing enough. So once I have the hot glue where I need it, I am going to place them right on top of each other and then let it dry. And then that way they're gonna permanently have this look and not be dancing around. You don't have to hot glue them, you can just leave them as is and maybe they'll look a little bit more natural. But to me, I wanted to have them stacked permanently. 
I am going to um, separate one of the strands of this nautical rope from Dollar Tree. I taped one of the ends so it didn't fray on me. Once I had it long enough for what I wanted, I am going to thread it through the little holes of the tags all the way through. And then I'm just going to knot them. Just make a very simple knot. And then I'm going to fray all of the strands. And that way they're all separated and looking very natural. We're all done with the tags, guys, and this one is absolutely stunning. I love the simplicity of it. I love how just natural it looks, but yet festive. Again, I just think the festive, natural look of these DIYs are beautiful. All right, so we're out here in my garage and I'm gonna take this one by four that I got actually recently in the scrap wood area and it came in this size. It was already like this and I bought it for 25 cents. And um, I'm gonna use it to create four pumpkins. Once I had them cut to the size that I wanted, they're all in the different sizes. I did angle the corners as well, but a little bit less of a cut because I didn't want them to have a tag look. I wanted to have more of a pumpkin look. If this is even a pumpkin look. <laughs> I sanded them down just a little bit to remove any splinters and just to smooth them down. I also painted them using Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the linen white. And I gave them also just one pretty heavy coat of the paint. Because we are going to distress them as well. Um, and I just want it to be just very light and natural. I am using my palm sander once again and a 150 grit sandpaper but really you could use a 180 it don't matter what you have um the palm sander is just an easy way to distress remove some of that edging paint within just in seconds literally once i had it sanded down i am going to drill a hole right on top of each pumpkin if you follow me for a while you know i love this technique to create pumpkins i just drill a hole on the pumpkin and then i did cut out four pieces of that driftwood that I used earlier and I did did angle cuts that way the pumpkin stems are going to be angled instead of straight up I also drilled a hole on them as well before I attach the stems to the pumpkins I did decide to antique a little bit more the edges of the pumpkin just for a little bit more dimension and character I'm using the same makeup sponge that I used to stencil earlier and the antiquing wax by Waverly I love this antiquing wax as a matter of fact i'm almost out and i just gonna have to order more because we uh walmart doesn't carry wear really products anymore which i'm sad all right so here we go i'm gonna take a screw stick and i'm just gonna place it right in the hole after i place some hot glue right in it and then i'm gonna cut and just leave a tiny little piece maybe a quarter of an inch um that way we can use that to then place the stem right over it same thing with the stems we're just going to place some hot glue right inside the hole and in this case i wanted to really really come out of the stem the hot glue so that way it has excess glue and then attach the stem look how cute they look angled like that i've never done that before i've always just cut them straight but i think adding that angled cut just made them look a lot more natural um again not that these look like real pumpkins <laughs> I gotta laugh at myself. All right, so now that they are, they are pretty complete, I'm going to stack them right on top of each other. I saw something similar at Hobby Lobby, a lot bigger and looked quite different, but the principle of these stacked wooden pumpkins was the same. So that's where I got my inspiration from. So I'm just gonna um, brad nail them right on top of each other, leaving the taller ones in the back and the shorter ones to the front. But you can stack them however you want if you're gonna recreate something similar to this. So the brad nails are one inch brad nails. They worked out perfectly for um, the thickness of the pumpkins. Now I'm going to take some more of that wired berries uh, vine and I'm just going to cut maybe about 10 inch long, wrap it around the stem and um, this time I'm going to use a pencil to curl them and that way it just looks nice and pretty. And we're just about done with this one. I gotta say, I love this set of pumpkins. The simplicity, their neutral tones, but yes, so festive. I love, and it could be incorporated into any fall decor, any fall style. 
I love them. It's definitely one of my favorites from today. If you enjoy DIY home decor, this is the channel for you. I post every single week, so make sure that you are subscribed and that you hit that notification bell so you do not miss any of the content. I'm gonna start by taking this paneling. It came out of the hardware store in the scrap wood area. It's, uh, I don't know how long it is. It was already this size. So I'm gonna take it and I am going to cut it into two pieces, one larger than the other one so that I have or I can make two large pumpkins for my front porch. I'm using my miter saw and like I said, I'm just gonna cut it. And then I am going to cut two angled cuts in each corner on the top portion. This is gonna give it just a little bit more of that pumpkin look, I guess, if it even looks like a pumpkin. <laughs> but anyways, once I have them cut, I am gonna bring them inside. I'm just gonna sand down and smooth down all the edges. And now I'm going to start painting it. I'm just going to do one coat. The larger one is going to be in these moss green by Weberly chalk paint. And then the smaller one is going to be uh, Rust-Oleum. No, did I? I think I used a regular household paint for that one. I did. And that way, because it's going to be outdoors, so I want it to be a little bit more durable, the paint. Uh, the chalk paint one, the green one, I did have to... Um, uh, spray paint with a top coat. I just use one of those spray paint top coats in the clear from Rust-Oleum just to kind of keep the paint there even in the elements if it gets a little bit wet. So now I'm going to sand down uh, the edges just to distress them a little bit and I'm also going to use some antiquing wax by Waverly and I'm just going to dab it with a chippy brush. This is just to add a little bit of dimension but also antique it you know just make it look like a little bit older like they've been around for a while and i'm also going to use the antiquing wax and um just to create those lines long lines kind of circular in the middle just to mimic a pumpkin and then for the green one i'm going to use some white paint as well as the antiquing wax and do the same thing to the other one just so that they match each other I'm gonna head outside and just try to find a piece of driftwood or just firewood that may fit the size that I need because I wanna create stems for my pumpkins, but I want them to look a little bit more on the rustic side. All right, so as you saw, I found this one. I think it's gonna work. It's actually kinda light, which is perfect to attach it. And um, I'm gonna cut it in half, maybe one side just a bit longer for the longer pumpkin and um, attach them. Once I'm had them cut the way I wanted them, I am going to use some painter sticks here and I'm just gonna start attaching them. I'm not gonna lie, I had a hard time getting these attached because they're very light wood and um, not the painter sticks, but the actual stem and they were not sticking. I used brad nails, I used staples. There was just not enough depth and substance to the piece of wood. So I ended up having to uh, make something up. So I ended up just trying to use some wire and drilling some holes and just trying my very best to make it work. So as you can see here, I just took a drill bit and a drill and I'm just drilling some holes and I'm gonna thread some wire and then I'm just gonna tie it. And you can't really see the wire um, at all. So it worked, really worked out well, but it took me a long time to um, figure this out because it was just not staying put. Now the little one, um, it did stay put and it's still on there and it works well, but for some reason this larger one was giving me a really hard time.
Once I had them attached, it's now time to attach them to the actual pumpkin. So I'm just going to place them right on top of that painter sticks. And I am just going to brad nail them with the quarter inch brad nails. That way it's not going to go through. Uh, but it'll be nice and secure. And I did the same thing for the other one. And it worked out really well. So we're back in the garage. Now I have this one by four, not one by four, two by four that I got at the scrap wood area at the hardware store. I'm to give it a uh, angled cut so that I can attach this to the back of each pumpkin and it serve me as a stand so that they don't fall backwards. That's the plan, we'll see. So the angles here are not gonna be like the best because my camera only goes so high and this is a very large um, piece. So as you can see there, I, that's just how it's gonna go. And then I did angled the other side, so the bottom side as well. That way it can be on the floor flush. So I'm just going to find the right angle here and try to use my paint can here to kind of hold the pumpkin in place while I brad nail it into the 2x4. And again, the angle is not the best, um, but um, you'll see what I'm doing. So now I'm just going to grab some jute rope and I'm going to make a very simple bow just to add a little bit of texture and a little bit of details. And I'm also going to grab, grab these wired berries that I got at the Dollar Tree. I'm going to wrap it around a little bit, um, tie it and secure it, and then just kind of curl the ends. So that way it just, again, just adds a little bit of detail. And I did the same thing to the green one. And I think they turned out so cute. All right, so I want to show you what it looks like on the back because I don't know if I got a good shot of how I was doing it. So I did a 22 degree angle cut right there. And then I did a 45 degree angle cut on the tip over there so that it can stand there and then be on here. And then I secured it with brad nails from the front and I did that on both of them. Alright guys, so I recently got our fence changed up to a new one. And so we now have on the side of the house these panels from our old fence. Isn't it like, ah, like a light just shined? <laughs> these are awesome. So the goal is to remove for today two of them because I want to make a welcome porch sign literally the length of the boards and taking two of them so let's see if i can take them out so this took me a little longer than i was expecting my husband had to come and help me because these panels were heavy and so i just wanted to be safe but basically all it took was just some tools and i did actually take off more than just two and now i have them ready in my garage for any future projects but i am going to keep those panels on the side of the house and use them as the time comes you know as i need them so removing all the old nails to make sure they're safe and here's what i got ready i'm going to take them to my garage and then i'm going to um sand them i'm going to take two of them and i'm going to sand them down uh to clean it up and just smoothen off and they're just so rustic and kind of love it but to work with it could be a little rough so sanding them down really worked so then I'm just going to line them up the way I want them side by side. I'm going to take these leftover scrap pieces of painter sticks. These are the larger 25 gallon ones. I use them for other projects and I keep the ends and um, I'm just going to use them and brand nail them to the, to the back. That way they are secure. Using my Cricut, I cut out the phrase home, replacing the O with a leaf. These are massive letters because as I mentioned in the beginning, these uh, three DIYs are really large. They're very um, sturdy, large pieces. So all these letters are going to be very large. So after I weed them down, I did go into the kitchen because that was a larger area that I had to put the, the panels there.
All right, so here we are. All the decals are in place. Now I'm just going to stencil them using Rust-Oleum chalk pen. No, not Rust-Oleum chalk pen. Using regular household paint in latex. This is exterior paint because again, it's going to be out on my porch. And the leaf I am going to paint in a bright yellow, uh, and it is also an exterior paint. And we are done with this one. This sign is massive. It is so tall. It's 62 inches. Actually, no, 72 inches tall. I love it. It's so sturdy, so heavy duty, and it looks great on my porch. Now, today I'm going to show you a staged photo here. But at the end, I'm going to give you a little bit of a sneak peek at what it looks like on my porch. But I am going to um, invite you to visit my home channel. And on Saturday, I am going to be posting the video on how I decorated and updated my front porch. So check it out. I do have my home channel linked down below. All right, for this next DIY, I'm going to take three of these Dollar Tree wreath forms. Two of them are similar in size, and then the other one is a little bit larger, even though they're supposed to all be around the same size. But it worked out really well for what I'm making here. We are going to make a pumpkin here. So it's going to be a pumpkin wreath form. So I'm going to take the two smaller ones. I'm going to join them together using hot glue as well as jute twine. Now, if you saw me there a little bit ago, I made a little loop at the end of the jute twine. You're going to see me doing that here a lot. It's a little trick that I use, like a little hack to make things really tight and secure. And that way you can just loop it right inside of it on the little loop and then just pull and tighten as much as possible and then either hot glue or knot it onto the jute twine. It works really well. And I'm going to do the same thing here as I add my large wreath form right on top you're going to start seeing kind of like how the pumpkin's going to look. I'm going to grab four of those jute twine strings, loop them at the end. And again, we're just going to add hot glue and then tie them with the jute twine. So everything's very tight. Remember, this is going to all be on my front porch. So it's going to be exposed to the elements, wind, rain. And I just want to make sure that it's not going to fall apart on me. So between hot glue as well as some really tight jute twine, everything's going to be nice, nice and secure. This is a piece of driftwood that I got outside, I think. It was in my garage. I honestly don't know where it came from, <laughs> but I loved it. So I'm just going to place it right underneath there on top. This is going to be the stem of my pumpkin wreath. And again, with hot glue and some jute string, I am going to tie it extremely tight because this is where it's going to hang from. <laughs> so I want to make sure it's going to be secure. So not only am I going to tie it on the top there, but I'm also going to tie it right on the bottom of the driftwood and then just crisscross it all around you're not going to be able to see this part anyways because we're going to add some flowers but i just want it again to be very secure and not go anywhere i'm going to take some dollar tree foam or floral foam and i'm just going to cut off about an inch thick square here and i'm going to hot glue it quite a bit right onto that center portion and i'm also going to tie it with two twine once again using that little loop trick that i showed you earlier just to make sure it's nice and tight and not going anywhere once i have that in place it's time to start adding some florals these are a combination of dollar tree uh let's see target dollar spot and hobby lobby flowers so i'm just going to start showing you here what i'm doing i'll speed it up here and there just to kind of you know i don't want to bore you with all this but i do want to show you kind of how i put it together because i know a lot of you um, are not as experienced with floral arrangements or making wreaths so i think this will be very helpful so i'm just going to cut and just I keep adding florals and as i see fit once i add the all around picks so these are just a combination of like grassy picks as well as cattails once I have that, then I decided to add the main flower, which is a Hobby Lobby hydrangea. And it's in this kind of like a burnt yellow color. I think it's stunning. And I'm just going to place it right in the front. Now we're going to start filling it in with some of this Dollar Tree florals and cutting little picks off of the main pick and then just adding them all around the main flower. I'm also going to add some of these little pine cones from Dollar Tree Picks. Again, I'm just adding here and there what I see fit and what I like uh, to the eye, what I want to kind of what my vision is for this wreath. I 
I did decide to trim a little bit the grassy ones because they were just a little too wild. <laughs> a little too long for my for what I was liking. So I just trimmed it a little bit. Now I'm going to take this Dollar Tree ribbon. I'm going to make a very simple double loop bow and secure it and tie it in the middle with some jute twine. And it's going to go kind of like to the right side of the florals, but on the bottom. And I'm going to do two things. I'm going to hot glue it, but I'm also going to take a leftover... Um, Oh my gosh, stem from a faux pick. It has a wire inside and I'm going to fold it like a U and you're going to see that here. So I'm going to take this and I'm just going to fold it like a U and I'm going to use that to pin the bow into the foam. So I'm going to add hot glue and then I'm going to take that little U that I made with that leftover wired pick and again just tighten it right onto the foam. See how I did that? So that just keeps it in place. It's not going to go anywhere and that's it for this one. I added more jute twine to the back just to be able to hang the wreath. But look how beautiful and stunning this looks. I am obsessed with this wreath. I think it's so cool. And the fact that I used three wreath forms from the Dollar Tree and just some florals that I already had on hand, I just love it. If you are enjoying this video so far, make sure you take a second and give me a thumbs up. A thumbs up really helps my channel grow and it helps this video reach more people. So for my first cut, I am going to cut uh, probably about maybe 18 inches long, give or take. It doesn't matter how long, but just for purposes of giving you a measurement, I would say it's about 18 inches long or so. So I'm going to use my miter saw to cut it um, and then I am going to cut the remainder into three equal size boards for another DIY, but for this one, I'm just gonna use this one here. Once I had the board cut to the size that I wanted, I'm just gonna sand it down because it was outside and it was dirty and it had just some green, kind of like mossy-like thing. <laughs> Anyways, I sanded it down both the front and the back and the sides and I used a 150 grit sandpaper. So now I'm going to take a couple of these. These are just pieces of painter sticks. These are like the 25 gallon ones. I just cut two inch pieces and I'm going to give them two coats over Stolium chalk paint in the linen white. And then I'm just going to place them right here towards the top. I want this to look like a little barn. It's going to be like a little fall barn kind of sign. Because the fence board already had that kind of like angled cut on the top, it kind of had a little bit more of a barn kind of style. So I left it as is. Once I secured it using my brad nailer, now I'm going to take this Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the country gray, and I'm just going to start making it look like little shutters. So I'm just going to distress the edges and then also crisscross it in the center. Again, just making it look like little shutters on top of the barn. Using my Cricut, I cut out a stencil that says give thanks and the give is going to be horizontal and then the thanks is going to be vertically on the right side of the sign. And I am going to stencil it using a makeup wedge sponge as well as Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the linen white. Now it's time to add a little bit of florals to the bottom of it. I'm going to take this Hobby Lobby flower. It's kind of like a burnt orange slash yellow. It's a beautiful fall color. And I'm going to staple it to the bottom. Now I stapled it twice. I am going to remove one of them just to add some of the leaves that came with it. And then I'll staple it again. I just decided that it needed a little bit of that greenery there to add some color. I'm going to take this, I believe is Dollar Tree ribbon, and I'm going to make a multiple loop bow very simple just loop it around several times i'm going to tie it with a piece of the same ribbon in the center and then i'm going to cut off the excess um, little legs there and that way um, we'll have it nicely neat i'm going to take some of that ribbon left over and i'm just going to staple it in the back as a loop and that'll be where we hang it i hot glue the bow and then i'm going to hot glue this white foam pumpkin and that's it <laughs> I told you it was easy. This was so much fun. I love using this board from the fence. It was already weathered and all it needed was a little bit of details and I think it turned out stunning.
For this next DIY, I am going to use the three equally sized cut pieces of that same fence bore that I mentioned earlier. And again, I'm just going to sand them down smoothly, remove a lot of the dirt, and just getting them nice and ready for decor. One of the bores actually was kind of cracked and I didn't want it to keep cracking. So I'm just going to take this leftover piece of painter stick and I'm going to wood glue it as well as brat nail it in place. This is going to keep it from um, just cracking even more. Once I had it done, I am going to place the sawtooth hooks on each one because I want this to be a sign that has three separate boards where you can hang as close or as separate as you would like. Using my Cricut, I cut out the stencil of a pumpkin and I'm just going to place it on the bottom, kind of towards the right side of the frame or not the frame, the sign. And as you can tell, all the boards, I placed them together really, really close to each other. Now I'm just going to start stenciling. Oh, I also cut a stencil that says Hello Pumpkin that was on the Cricut Design Space. I'm using Rust-Oleum Chalk Paint in the Linen White. I'm also going to use, um, I think it's called Venetian Yellow Milk Paint for the pumpkin portion. And I am using a chalk paint brush that I love, love, love. If you are looking for a good chalk paint brush, this is a really good one. It's a Tutler and Tatum. I do have them on my Amazon store, which I, a lot of the supplies, paints, and tools that I use. I do have on my Amazon store and I always have it linked down in the description box if you want to take a look so here's that yellow that I was talking about it lightened it up because I did use the same brush with the white paint but we're all done again another super easy one so simple and yet so festive and so rustic I love it For this next DIY, I'm going to take this thrifted kind of like broom, scarecrow broom. I don't know. It was a little spooky and creepy. I did not like this doll. So I was happy to get rid of it. <laughs> I'm also going to get rid of the little handle because it was broken and just out of control and it was just not working out. Now I'm going to take and I'm just going to dry brush the entire thing. Um, just adding as much as paint as I want, but I do want some of the wicker kind of bamboo color to peek through. So I am going to, um, I am using a chippy brush and Rust-Oleum chalk paint and the linen white. And I'm just going to dry brush the entire thing, including the handle. Now it's time to add some florals. Before we do that, I am going to take about an inch square thick floral foam from the Dollar Tree. And I'm also going to take some jute twine. I loop the end of the jute twine, one of the ends, and that way I can like just thread it like you can see there. And then tighten it really, really tight and then just tie it. This works out really well if you want to tighten something. So there's a little tip for you. Once I have it tightened, I do cut off the excess jute twine. And then it's time to add some florals. I'm again going to use some of those florals from Hobby Lobby. This is a little bit more of a darker burnt orange kind of burgundy color. I am going to add some hot glue and just stick it right there in the center. And then I added some of the green leaves that it came with the florals. I'm just going to stick them one in each side again just to add some fullness as well as that beautiful green color. It's like the hunter green. Let's take this burlap ribbon from burlapfabric.com. I'm going to make a very simple bow. I basically just loop it and then scrunch it in the middle um, and then tie it. It's just the easiest way I know how to make a bow. I've made it this way for a long, long time and it's just really quick and easy. Tie it in the middle with some jute twine, cut the excess jute twine, and then it's time to hot glue it to the bottom of the arrangement. Oh, I did dovetail the ends just to make it look a little shorter and also just cute again i'm just going to hot glue it towards the bottom left corner of the arrangement and then i decided to add this pumpkin it's a kind of faux leather looking kind of pumpkin i used one of the leftover uh, wired picks that i had and i just stuck it right underneath and then i'm going to hot glue it as well as just stick it right there into the foam just on the top left corner of the arrangement. I think it looks so cute. And then it's time to just fill in some of the empty spaces towards the top because you can still see some of that green foam. So I'm gonna take some of these Dollar Tree, uh, they're like burnt orange color, and uh, just stick them through and that's it. I mean, I think it turned out super cute. Oh, I did add a couple of these 
uh, target dollar spot picks just on the top because it felt like it needed something right there so i stuck it right there and we are done so it's an easy flip of this broom i love the new look i absolutely love that it has that bright fresh fall look For this next DIY, I am going to take a piece of just cardboard from an, I think it's like an Amazon box. And I'm going to freehand a little pumpkin here. And then I'm going to cut it using my X-Acto knife. This is so that we can create, we're going to start to create a little banner that can be hung on a fireplace or placed on a mantle or anywhere. Anywhere you would want, like maybe a console table. So we're going to start with these little pumpkins that I'm just going to freehand and cut from cardboard. And then I'm going to use the first one I trace or the first one i cut and trace for a second and a third one that way we'll have a total of three then it's time to paint them i'm going to use this yellow paint it's by folk art it's a chalk one i can't remember the color but if i do remember i'll have it down below i'm going to paint the pumpkin portion of it with this yellow on all three of them and then i'm going to use some brown latex paint that i had on hand to paint the stem as well as add some shadowing and some details to make them look a little bit more like pumpkins This thankful, grateful, and blessed little wooden words came, I believe it was from Dollar Tree, and I got a couple of the little packets. I'm just going to dry brush some white paint on them. Although they look great with the wood tone, I just wanted them to be a little bit more on the lighter side because everything else is going to be darker colors. Then it's time to put everything together. So I'm going to take some thicker jute twine, and I'm going to start hot gluing in a pattern. So I'm going to put a pumpkin, then the thankful, then it's going to be a faux leather leaf from Hobby Lobby, then the blessed then another pumpkin you get the idea right <laughs> so i'm doing it backwards here because i, I just want to be able to hot glue and know where i'm placing it but just just kind of turn it around as you need if you're going to recreate something like this just leaving enough space in between that kind of match each other so i was leaving between uh three and a half to four inches in between decor and then once we're done with this one, we're done for today. I think this turned out so stinking cute. These are just very inexpensive items, so easy to make. And really, you can use anything. It doesn't even have to be like hand-drawn pumpkins. It can be anything you want. are going to begin with this beautiful hello pumpkin sign that is black and white and it has these little pumpkins that have brown on it and i just think it's just super adorable all right friend so here's the board that i'm going to use to create that hello pumpkin sign from kirkland's and it's a lot larger than what i was anticipating i found this just like this the same size and everything in the scrap wood area at the hardware store so I took this Dollar Tree little wooden pumpkin that you can get them. You've probably seen them. And I'm just going to trace it on foam core from the Dollar Tree. And then I know it's going to be way too big because the pumpkins are smaller on the original inspiration decor. So I'm just going to trace right under, about an inch under that pumpkin so that I can cut uh, a smaller pumpkin but still have the pumpkin look. Here's the thing. <laughs> it was still too large. As a matter of fact, it was still too large like three times. <laughs> this pumpkin went from bigger to smaller to smaller to smaller i kid you not it was kind of comical look at this i keep going smaller and smaller i guess i didn't realize either how big the pumpkin was or how many letters pumpkin actually had in it <laughs> i don't know nonetheless i finally got a size that worked and now i'm going to use that original pumpkin and just trace and cut out seven more that way we have eight i know it's one extra ones but you just never know if i'm gonna mess up one of them so i'd like to have an extra one 
I sanded down the board and now I'm going to give it two coats of Rust-Oleum Chalk Paint in the Linen White. For the foam pumpkins, I am going to kind of flip them. Some of them are going to be looking one way and then some looking the other way, just in a random way. And I am going to give them one coat of Rust-Oleum Chalk Paint in the Linen White just to brighten it up. And then I am going to take the board that is now dry and I am going to tape a uh, kind of like a border. Um, the original had an actual frame around it. I did not have the materials for it. So we're just going to make it look or give it the illusion that it has a frame. So I taped it all around, left about a quarter of an inch to maybe an inch. And now I am going to paint the border as well as the edges using Waverly Chalk Paint in the ink, which is a very, very dark black. I don't know what it is about removing tape that is so satisfying <laughs> all right so onto the pumpkins now they're dry i am going to take some of this brown and i'm just going to start shading them the original inspiration from kirkland had kind of like this look so i am going to shade all around the edges and then of course add some details in the center of the pumpkins to make them look a little bit more like pumpkins and i'm going to try to do all of them a little bit different but still very similar And now I am going to write the word pumpkin and I'm just going to just freehanded. I thought about using my Cricut, but I thought, hey, what's the fun in that? <laughs> no, it wasn't. Um, the original looked like they were hand, you know, written. So I just thought, let me just try it. It worked out well. So um, again, pumpkin, I did have an extra little pumpkin um, because everything turned out pretty well. But uh, nonetheless, we'll leave that for another project. I did, however, use my Cricut to cut out the hello because I am not that talented. <laughs> my Cricut does it for me. So I just used a permanent black um, glossy. It's just what I had on hand. I would have preferred matte, but we use what we have, right? So now it's time to attach all the pumpkins, and I'm literally just going to hot glue them. They're made out of foam core, so they'll stick. They're not heavy. They're not going to go anywhere. And we're just about done. I did add a couple sawtooth hooks on the back. And let me remind you what the original looked like. And then this is what mine looks like. I'm actually pretty satisfied. This board was 25 cents. The pumpkins were made out of foam core, which was a dollar. And of course, just a little bit of paint and a little bit of vinyl. And that's it. Love it. For the next inspiration, we're going to take this Kirkland stacked pumpkin with a little tag that says Happy Fall. So we're going to start with some foam core again here from the Dollar Tree, and I'm going to freehand the pumpkins. I don't mind. I actually enjoy this um, just freehanding painting. If you follow me for a while, you know that every so often I like to create my own art. So this one was actually very satisfying for me and very entertaining, and I found it very relaxing as well. But I'm just going to let you watch here as I paint away and hopefully you'll find it satisfying and enjoyable and entertaining and um, and then I'll, I'll chime in here and there.
and we're just about done with the pumpkin um we just have to do the stem here i'm going to use some brown acrylic paint and just uh just paint it i did have to cut off a little bit of the stem um a little bit later i don't show it because it didn't fit in my little frame that i created um for it and i'll show you how i made that frame but i am going to use some of the white here and just add a few little details just to kind of mimic a little bit more of the original one and then i'm going to make these little like curls that it had with brown paint and i'm just going to go one on each side like the original piece had and now it's time to um, start creating a frame for the for the sign for the pumpkins as the original had it and i'm just going to use some of these painter sticks um, these are the 25 gallon ones and i'm just going to cut them to size to fit the pumpkin and like i said i cut it just a little too small where the little stem didn't fit quite perfectly but that was okay i made it work so once i had all the pieces for the frame cut i'm just going to staple them on the back side so this is going to be the side where i have all the measure measuring kind of ruler thing and um this because we're going to have glue it facing down so once i have the frame nicely done then i'm going to use the frame and trace it on some foam board and that's what we're going to use for the backing of the frame once i have it traced i'll cut it with the exacto knife Just like the original piece, it had a uh, buffalo check black and white background. Now it's not exactly the same one I have, but this is what I had already on hand from Hobby Lobby. So I'm just going to hot glue it on the edges and cover the back. And then I'm gonna use the rotary cutter and cut out the excess fabric so it's nicely trimmed. And now I am going to hot glue the frame right on top of the buffalo check background. And that's going to be sufficient again because it is foam core and it's really lightweight. So hot glue was plenty, plenty. Now I'm going to hot glue the pumpkin right inside of it. Again, just using hot glue, which was fine. And then we're going to add a few little extra details. The original piece had a tag that said happy fall so i had this one that i happened to have purchased recently at walmart it was maybe about a dollar fifty something like that it was not expensive at all um and i painted it white while that's drying i am going to freehand a little um, multiple loop bow using some jute string um, like the original had as well and i'm just going to tie it in the center and then we're going to start writing um actually lining here the tag just like the original had like a little black border so i'm just going to line the tag here making it seem like a border and then i'm going to freehand the words happy fall just like the original piece had And now it's time to attach it to the pumpkins. I'm just basically going to cut the excess string. I'm going to add some hot glue behind the stem. And I'm just going to push in the jute string right underneath it. And it'll attach perfectly. And it's going to look like it's hanging from the stem of the pumpkin. And after that, we are done, my friend. Oh my gosh, this one is one of my favorites today. Let me remind you what the original looked like. Beautiful, beautiful. And this is mine. I don't know, but I'm pretty proud of myself. I rarely say that, but when I do, it's because I really mean it. I was, I had so much fun painting these pumpkins and creating all these shadows and the illusion of a stacked pumpkin set. I really love the way it turned out. So thank you, Adrian, for challenging me.
The next piece that I'm going to use from Kirkland is this I Love Fall Most of All sign. So I took an 8 by 11 canvas board from the Dollar Tree and I gave it one coat of Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the linen white. While that is drying, I am going to take this faux leather leaf and I'm going to use it as a guide. I traced over it, but maybe about a half inch wider than what the original leaf had. This buffalo check has like all the fall colors that are beautiful. So it's not the exact same as the original piece, but again, it's what I had on hand. I got this at Hobby Lobby. So once I had the leaf traced, I'm just going to cut it very patiently <laughs> until I have the leaf. We're going to do the same thing that we did with the first piece. We're going to create the illusion of a frame. I'm going to use some painter's tape again, and I'm going to create a frame with about a half an inch thickness and then we're going to paint it using Waverly chalk paint and the moss. The original piece has some distressing kind of like falling from the top and the bottom. So I'm going to create kind of a similar look to it using a taking wax by Waverly and a chippy brush. And I'm just going to do that until I am satisfied, but not add too much because the original piece didn't have a lot. It was more of a detail than anything else. And then it's time to attach the leaf and I'm just going to do it with some hot glue. Using my Cricut, I cut out the phrase, I love fall most of all. I tried my very best to mimic the same font style as the original piece from Kirkland. And I am going to stencil it using a makeup sponge and Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the country gray. That did not take long. So once it was dry, did you see that cap fly? Oh my God. Anyway, so I removed the vinyl and once it was dry, it was beautiful. Let me remind you what the original piece looked like. And this is what mine looks like. Oh, such beautiful colors. I love the inspiration one. It's absolutely stunning from Kirkland's. But, you know, creating your own sometimes is very satisfying. So I love it. For the next one, I got inspired by this wreath from Kirkland's. It's beautiful it's on the simple side, which is my cup of tea. I already had this wreath that I recently updated in my guest bathroom. I'm going to remove some of the uh, decors that I had placed on it. I'm just going to keep the eucalyptus leaves on it. And I actually happen to have this pick from Walmart that had eucalyptus leaves on it and I thought how perfect to make this wreath form a little fuller. So what I'm going to do is I cut out all the branches off of the pick and I'm going to hot glue them all around the wreath just giving the illusion that this wreath form is a lot fuller than what it actually is. This little baby's breaths I get on Amazon and I had one pick left and I'm just going to cut out some of the branches and actually three to be exact and I'm just going to hot glue them in separate places of the wreath making sure that they're nicely even separated. The original piece had a similar baby's breath on it so I wanted to mimic that and then of course I took some faux pumpkins from a Dollar Tree pick that I recently got at Dollar Tree, cut out three pumpkins like the original piece had and hot glue them separately all around the wreath.
And we're just about done with this one. It was one of the easiest ones that I had. This one was actually one that inspired me, but I wanna show you what the original looked like. It's beautiful. And now I'm gonna show you what mine looks like. I think it's beautiful too. <laughs> If you ask me, I love this challenge. I love the fact that we get to see these beautiful high-end decor from stores and we can actually use our creativity to create our own. All right, for this DIY, we are going to take this piece of wood that I get at the hardware store. If you follow me for a while now, you know that I love going to the hardware store and getting pieces of wood in the scrap wood area this is the area where customers go get a piece of wood cut to whatever size they want and then whatever is left over they don't feel like taking it so they leave it there and i get them for 25 cents now this piece here was uh the way that it was it was not cut it was already this size so i am going to pretty much give it one coat a pretty heavy one coat of rust-oleum chalk paint in the linen white and then let it dry while that's drying, I am going to take this Hello Fall wooden words and I am going to, these are from Hobby Lobby. I am going to remove the jute twine and fill in the little holes with some wood filler, scrape it off so that it is smooth. And then we're gonna start to paint it. Originally, I thought I would do the entire thing one color and then I thought, you know what? Let's add some multiple colors here. I started with this nice, beautiful blue from Artisa. However, it's a little bit too translucent for my vision. My vision was to have a little bit more of a cottage blue. So anyways, nonetheless, I'm just going to show you the process because it is a beautiful blue. It almost stained the wood instead of painting the blue, which is beautiful. But I think it had more of a summer tone to it. So I did take some of this blue. This is Coastal Blue by Rust-Oleum Chalk Paint, and this did the trick. As a matter of fact, I think it worked out perfect having both colors because that lighter blue kind of came through and it turned out really cute. Then the bottom one, I am going to use another Artisa color. This is one of uh, their like more like a fall color, it's an amber color, and I'm just going to paint the fall with that color and then let it fully dry. Now I am going to take this fabric that I recently got at Hobby Lobby. They have some beautiful selections and this was 40% off and I got a yard and I'm gonna cut a piece. And I don't know, it was about 10 inches. It was just long enough to cover one side and then I cut it about 10 inches wide, give or take. I am now going to spread it on the left side of the board covering one side and I am going to hot glue it as well as staple it. Once I had that in place, it's time to take some of this ticking stripe fabric. I also got a Hobby Lobby, but it was more in the summertime. I'm gonna cut a piece here. This one is about four inches. And again, just long enough to go around the back. I'm going to staple it in place right in the center of the yellow fabric. I am then going to take the Hello Fall and I am going to place it to the right side of the fabric and brad nail it in place with half inch brad nails. That way it'll stay in place and we're done. I love this sign guys. I can't believe I actually love these colors for fall this year. I don't know why I've just been into these like yellow tones and blues and I just really love the way this one turned out. Beautiful. All right, so don't laugh here, okay? But <laughs> this is one of these funeral homes, little vases. You know what I'm talking about. You've seen them. My mom found 
two of them in the trash on the side of the road. She literally grabbed them and brought them to me. So yes, I disinfected them with some <laughs> disinfecting wipes and got them really, really clean. And now I'm just going to start painting it using that same Coastal Blue by Rust-Oleum Chalk Vein. The first coat was kind of sloppy because it is a very slick surface so i did do one coat and then the second coat i'm not going to show you but the second coat i actually dabbed it instead of brushing it so instead of like swiping brush i just dabbed it and it worked out better so this is after two coats here and now i'm going to distress this so that some of those white details start popping because this vase has a lot of texture and by wiping it with a wet cloth i'm using the wet distressing technique here i'm just going to start removing some of the paint and that way some of those details will pop nicely I am now going to take some of this floral foam from the Dollar Tree and I am going to hot glue it all the way inside to the bottom and just fill in the all the corners because we're going to make a beautiful fall arrangement and I want to make sure that I have floral foam in every side. I'm going to use a combination of different florals. This is going to be florals from Dollar Tree, florals from Hobby Lobby, and florals from Walmart. It's just whatever I had on hand for the exception of... Um, the Hobby Lobby florals that I'll show you here in a minute. This moss is from Dollar Tree. I love the fact that it had green as well as brown moss, and I think it was perfect for fall. However, you couldn't even see it anyways <laughs> because I filled it up with flowers, but nonetheless, it's in there and it looks pretty. I'm gonna take some of these little, they're like full little, oh, what do you call it? They're just dried leaves, and I'm just gonna start sticking them in everywhere um, as well as some full dried corn stalks that I have had since last year and I'm going to start with these because they are the taller ones thinner ones and I just want to put these in first and then some of those ones they're right in the center and then I'm going to start adding some of the Hobby Lobby flowers that I recently got these are beautiful I actually got them in these kind of like orangey tones as well as the beige as well as a burgundy oh I'm so in love but today I'm only going to use three of this one because I just want to keep the yellowish, bluish kind of tone here. So then after that, I started adding some of these orange flowers from the Dollar Tree. I just used one pick and then cut off all the little branches. And I'm just going to place them everywhere until I see it nicely even everywhere. Then I'm going to take some of these little faux leather pumpkins from Hobby Lobby. And I'm going to use a skewer stick. And I'm going to hot glue the tip and then stick it right on the bottom because they are uh, cotton. They have like cotton inside. And I'm just going to stick them in there and I'm going to do three. And I'm going to spread them nicely, you know, maybe one in each side and then one towards the front. But look how cute this looks. I can't believe this was in the trash. And I have another one that I can do something with maybe for Christmas. I'm excited, but I think it turned out beautiful. For this next DIY, we are going to cover this decorative pillow. This pillow was on my bed in my bed in my bedroom for a while and it's already it's had better days. It has a hole on one side and it's just it's just not the way. It doesn't look pretty. So we are going to give it a fall cottage look here. We're going to take more of that yellow fabric. Don't mind the wonderful cut. <laughs> I can't believe I cut that. So uneven. Anyways, you won't be able to see it. Now I am going to, so this is only going to cover one side of the pillow, like half the pillow. And I am going to make basically a pocket for one side of the pillow. And I'm going to hot glue two sides, leaving one of the larger sides open. And that's going to be where I'm going to slide one side of the pillow. I am then going to take, I'm actually going to flip it inside out so you see what I'm talking about. It's just a little pocket. So then I'm going to take some drop cloth. Now, you know, if you follow me again, you know that I love working with drop cloth. It has a very natural muted tones that I love and the texture. So I'm going to do the same thing here and I'm just going to cut enough fabric and hot glue two ends until I have another pocket.
I cut out the word autumn with my Cricut using some stencil vinyl. By the way, I have this stencil vinyl in my Amazon store if you're interested. I really love it for stenciling. And I also have a lot of my supplies and tools and paint that I love from Amazon in my Amazon store, which is linked down below. So I transferred it to the bottom side of the drop cloth and now I am stenciling it with a makeup sponge as well as that same coastal blue from Rust-Oleum chalk pen. I'm just going to stencil the whole thing, not looking for perfection because I do like a little bit of a distressed look and then it'll be done. And now it's time to get the pillow inside the cover. So we're going to start with the yellow one. It's kind of snug, but that's good. I like making my pillowcases just a little bit smaller than the pillow. That way it fits nicely and they're not going to be too big on them. And then we're going to do the other one as well, overlapping the yellow. And I think this pillow turned out so stinking cute. I love the texture. I love the colors. And what a great way to reuse a pillow that just had better days. <laughs> but I um, just love the way it turned out. For this next DIY, we are going to start with this Dollar Tree Gird. It is beautiful. However, I am going to give it a new look. I am going to paint it just one coat of the Coastal Blue Chalk Paint and uh, from Rustolian, and then I am going to start. It's going to be like a little, um, like a little stack of pumpkins. As you can see, I did take a dowel and stick it right in the middle, and then I'm going to use one of the Dollar Tree Floral, floral Foams so that it dries. So this going to take another one of those little tiny faux leather pumpkins from Hobby Lobby and I'm going to cut a little bit of that ticking stripe fabric and we're going to wrap it using hot glue. Now this took a little bit because it was a tiny little pumpkin. It was hard to cover it up but using some glue and just all 10 of my fingers <laughs> I got it to be covered. I am now going to take this little white pumpkin that came as a, inside a pick from Dollar Tree and I'm going to reuse the little tiny stem that the faux leather pumpkin had and I'm going to hot glue it to the top. And now we're going to stack everything, hot gluing it in place and creating a little pumpkin stack. Now the Rustoleum chalk paint looks like it's still wet but I promise you it's not. I don't know what was going on with the paint. I don't know if there was something on the actual pumpkin that made it look this way, but it was dry. I mean, my fingers were not getting painted. The white surface was not getting painted. So I don't know, I kind of like it. I, I enjoy seeing things that are not perfect, but I have no clue why it looked still like it was wet. But we're gonna start using some Dollar Tree berries and some Dollar Tree little little decorative florals here to add a little bit of something to the pumpkin stack. I tried hot gluing that. You see how it keeps sticking up. I kept pushing it down, it kept coming back up. So in a little bit, I'll show you what I did to keep it down. So here it is. I'm gonna bend one of those little wires from the berries and I'm just gonna stick it right onto the foam pumpkin and that made it stick. And then I realized that it was kind of long so I cut off a lot of the little brown berries that you see there and you're going to see how I hot glue it to the top and it worked out really well. And we're just about done. Look how beautiful this little stack of pumpkin looks. Just a great addition to the vignette that I have created with the sign, the floor arrangement, the pillow. I just think this really finishes it off. But look how cute, even with the multi-tone blue <laughs> on the pumpkin. I think it turned out super cute.
we are going to start here in my garage and I am going to take some of these scrap wood pieces that I have had for a while. They're different lengths, different shapes, but we are going to use several of them. All right, so what I am going to be making is a kind of like a planked style vertical sign for fall. And I wanted to have different style, different thickness and different textures of wood. So I just went and grabbed just some scrap pieces that I have left over um, of wood. They're all about the same thickness, which is okay, but I want them to have a different um, thickness going this way um, as well as different textures. So I also got this one, it's a little bit different. It's rounded, um, but we're gonna cut them to different lengths. And once I had them cut to the length that I wanted, I am now going to just stagger them in whatever pattern I want, whatever seems and feels right to me and what I'm looking for, I guess. And then once I have them, I am going to start painting them. We are going to paint them in multiple colors. And my inspiration for it is this fabric that we are going to be using in a little bit. But um, I got that at Hobby Lobby and I just love the colors. It had a very trendy kind of fall theme color so I am going to that's my inspiration so I am going to paint two of them white I'm not looking for perfection because we are going to be distressing it pretty heavily so I'm not looking for everything to have full coverage the other colors I'm going to go with this yellow by rust milk paint and I'm also going to use a DIY paint by Debbie's design diary in the apothecary I'm also going to use a green color by Dixie Bell and then lastly, I am going to use an amber tone color by Artisa. It's a latex color, but it ended up distressing pretty well. So I was happy with it. So I'm just going to, again, just continue to paint here and let it fully dry. As I mentioned earlier, I am going to distress these pieces pretty heavily. So I am using my palm sander and a 50 grit, not a 50, a 150 grit sandpaper. And I'm just going to go about and just distressing all the boards. You can go as little or as much as you want, or you can leave them just as they were. It's no right or wrong way. I just like the distressed look for this particular design. So I'm going to distress all of them, um, focusing mainly on the edges as well as a little bit in the center. Once they were distressed, I just dusted them off, then flipped them over, and then I just kind of stagger them or kind of spread them as far left and right as I wanted them to go. And then I am going to use two, those, oh, two of those larger paint sticks, and I'm going to cut the excess of them off, and then I'm going to brad nail them in place. Using my Cricut, I cut out the phrase, there is always something to be grateful for. I got inspired by one that I saw on Pinterest and I thought that is perfect for this sign. So I'm gonna use um, some transfer tape here that I get on Amazon. I do have it linked down below. So I'm just gonna keep transferring the words to each plank and then uh, we're gonna get to adding some screws to the back so that we can hang it.
I decided to keep it simple. I added a couple screws to the back and then I'm going to add some wire and twist it around each um, screw and that way we can hang it on the wall if needed. And that's it for this one, guys. It turned out so beautiful. It's actually one of my favorites from today. I love the colors. I love how fall it is, but yet it has just these beautiful, trendy colors that I really, really am digging right now. All right, for this next one, we are going to quickly grab here this little thrift wood that I was kind of cleaning, not too much, guys, but sort of kind of organized in our garage. And I found those thrift woods, and so I picked one of them, and I'm going to cut a piece off of it. Now I am going to take some of that fabric that I showed you earlier that was the whole inspiration for today's video. I'm going to cut out a piece. I didn't measure it. I just kind of eyed it out. But if I were to measure it, I would say it's about an 18 by 24 inch, um, but uh, give or take, depending. We're just going to make a very simple fabric pumpkin. I'm sure you've seen a million of these versions <laughs> being made on YouTube and other media, but I decided to make my own and hopefully it's a little different that can inspire you. So I'm just going to take some of that pillow stuffing. I usually have a Walmart pillow. They're like $3 and I usually have one in my home specifically where I can just take some of the stuffing out as needed. And I'm going to start wrapping the fabric around, right? You know what I'm talking about. Just wrap around, wrap around, making sure that any of the smaller edges are tucked in into the larger ones so they don't stick out. Now with this one, I don't know why it took me so long to make. I have made so many of these pumpkins and for some reason I could not get a handle on this one. But nonetheless, I figured it out. And then once I had it tucked in where I wanted, I took some jute twine and I tied it on the center there on the top with a simple knot. And then I cut off the excess on top. Now, after I cut off the excess, I realized I never put in my thrift wood in. So then I cut the jute twine off again. This time I'm kind of freaking out because I'm thinking, oh my gosh, if I let go of this little tiny pieces of fabric on top, but I figured it out. So I'm going to stick the driftwood right in there and then I am going to tie everything nicely tight. That way it's not going to come off. Now if some of the little edges come off, don't stress about it. You can always hot glue it neatly on the sides and it should be fine. But in my case it actually worked out, but it was a truly a miracle because I was struggling with this. So once I had it tight with a knot, again a very simple knot, I decided to just take some more jute twine and just make a multiple loop bow with it i just wrap it around my fingers scrunch it in the middle take another piece of jute twine tie it around the middle and that's it and then once i had it all done it was time to then hot glue it to the front of the pumpkin and i did cut off the excess jute strings that are just laying around there and that's it for this one guys Ooh, this one is definitely one of my favorites i love this fabric i love the colors and again, it was the inspiration for my whole video today. But let me know what you think of this little pumpkin. Oh, I love it. For this next DIY, we are going to take some of these magnolia leaves that I got at the Dollar General. They were only $2 picks and this, the one, the bigger one was $2 and then the other one was $2 too, but it was a leftover piece from another project. I am not going to take this Dollar Tree pick that I recently got in their fall section. I'm just going to fan it out, spread it out and place it right on top of the magnolia leaves. And then I'm going to take this little pick with little pumpkins again from the Dollar Tree, fan it out place it on top and the same with these orange florals this is a very easy arrangement that we're going to make you can place on anywhere really any wall or even the front door instead of a wreath I think it will look really beautiful and it's really easy I'm showing you a very simple way that you can do it so once I had all the picks laying right on top of each other right now I'm just kind of threading 
several pigs like little branches to come forward and then back just to kind of make it look a little bit more natural once i had it where i want it i'm going to take more jute twine and i'm going to tie the stems together and then i'm going to take some burlap ribbon from burlap ribbon let's see burlap fabric is it burlapfabric.com yes <laughs> anyways this is burlap ribbon and i'm going to do multiple loops and then cut it out and then i'm just going to scrunch it in the middle and tie it with some jute twine. Once I have it tied in the back, then I am going to wrap it around the stems and tie it to the stems. And that way it's just nice and secure. I thought about hot gluing it, but it's better when you're working with stems to just tie it in the back. And then once I had it tied in the back, it was time to add some of that fabric again. The fabric that I, the whole inspiration fabric, you know what I'm talking about. And I'm going to cut a piece off of it. You see, it's just like a little rectangle. I'm going to fold it until I have about eight or nine inches wide. And then I am going to scrunch it in the middle and tie it with jute twine. And that's so that we can create a little bow but have the fabric tones. I want all these DIYs to kind of go together and like they belong to each other, like they're a set. Once I have it where I want it, now I'm going to once again with the excess jute twine, string it in through the flowers and then tie it in the back with a simple knot. I'm going to arrange the bows just so that they are they look nicely and neat. And then I'm going to take more of that thicker jute twine and wrap it around a few times and once again I'm going to make a very simple multiple loop bow, tie it in the middle with some jute twine and hot glue it to the front of the fabric bow. This is just going to finish it off and look very very cute. Just add some more layers. And then I decided there was something missing right underneath the bows. So that little empty area in the front. So I cut out these two picks from a Dollar Tree pick. And I'm going to just slide them in there. I'm not even going to hot glue. Just going to slide them in all the way in as far as I want. And that way it just fills in that little area there. And then to finish everything off, I am going to cut the excess stems. Just so they are, they're still showing, but just so they are all the same size. And look how cute this little swag is i love it it's actually a pretty good size most of the items are from the dollar tree or the dollar general and of course you can use any ribbon that you may have on hand and it's perfect for any fall decor For this next DIY, we are going to take some more of this wood that I have on hand. This is a 1x3, a 1x4, and a 1x6. And we are going to start cutting them all about 9 inches, uh, maybe about 10 inches. The Or the larger one is about 10 inches. And then the, the uh, medium-sized one was about an inch smaller. And then the smaller one about an inch smaller than that. So and then I'm going to cut off an angled cut. This is like a 45 angle cut to um, each and only on the top of the board so this is what we're looking they look like little tiny houses we are going to paint the larger one in the same rust-oleum yellow that i used earlier and only give it one coat this time the middle one the medium sized one is going to be stained using some waverly and taking wax and i'm just going to brush it on and wipe off the excess and then the smaller one is going to be painted once again with the apothecary color by DIY paint and I'm going to let them fully dry. Once they're dry, we are going to be distressing them once again using my palm sander. And now we are going to just stack them on top of each other, larger to smallest one. And we are going to secure them using bread nails in the one inch. And I'm going to place them right in the center so you don't see them on the middle one. Now on the top one, we are going to bread nail them in each corner. That way it looks a little bit neater and more unified. But um, I don't mind seeing those bread nails. And then once we had them secured, it's time to drill a hole on the larger one. So just on the top one, or the larger one on the top. 
and I am going to place some hot glue right inside the hole and then one of these skewers sticks right in there and then we are going to cut leaving about an inch on top. Then we're going to take another piece of that driftwood that we used earlier in the pumpkin. We are going to drill a hole on that one as well. Put in some hot glue and then stick it in right in the stick right there. And then that way it's nicely secure and it's not going to come off. We're going to make like a little 3D pumpkin. Now we're going to take some of that thicker jute twine tied around the stem. Again, make a multiple loop simple bow tied in the center with some jute twine and hot glue it to the front of the little stem there. And then I decided to take some greenery from, I don't know what it was. I think it was just from Ray Greenery that it fell off of another pick. <laughs> and I'm just going to pull a couple of the green stems there and I'm just going to hot glue them and place them in right up behind the bow, kind of just sticking out through the back. And I'm going to do that on the other side. And then once I have that all glued on there, that's it. We're done. I guess I could have added a lot more, but I always tend to go on the simple side. And I just think this 3D pumpkin turned out stunning. What a way to add more texture and just another piece of decor with the same kind of, you know, colors that we've been working with. Look how beautiful it looks there with the other fabric pumpkin. I just love it. Alright, for this DIY, I am going to start with a 2x4 that I got recently at the hardware store. It was a little bit longer. It was in the scrap wood area, but I did cut it down to 15 inches long. I sanded it down and then I added some of this glaze from um, Rust-Oleum. It's awesome to work with. You can stain with it and it doesn't have a strong odor and is actually really easy to remove from hands. So I highly recommend if you do not want to use regular stain. Now I'm going to take these four little foam pumpkins from the Dollar Tree. And the first thing I'm going to do is remove the little stem from the top and then just add some hot glue and put it right back in. Those little stems seem to me like they're always feels like they always look like they're sticking out, <laughs> like, like they're coming off. So I like to always remove them and put them right back in with some hot glue. And that does the trick. I am going to give each of these pumpkins two and a half coats of Rust-Oleum Chalkman because I do want them to have a very crisp, clean, minimal look to them. Once the paint was fully dry on each one, I am going to start doing the kind of like the speckled look. And I'm going to use one of these uh, Artisa acrylic paints. And they're really, it's a really beautiful color. I am going to have it down in the description box. And it's like an amber tone. And I'm just going to start spritzing it. As you can see, dabbing a hard bristle brush into the paint. And then start just spritzing it and giving it that speckled look. Normally I've seen them with like maybe black paint, but um, I wanted to try it with this amber color and I really like the way it turned out. It's a bit messy, <laughs> but it's a good technique to use. Once the paint was dry, now it's time to start placing the pumpkins right on top of the two by four. I'm just gonna dry place them here just to kind of see where I want them and which, which one I want it where. Once I had them where I want them, I'm not gonna drill. So I just kind of eyed out where the center of each pumpkin was. I used my drill and a drill bit to drill a hole, not all the way through, just kind of like halfway through. Then I use one of these skewers, sticks, and I'm going to place it right in with some hot glue. Cut about an inch up of, uh, or from the surface of the board, and that way we can um, place the pumpkin right in it. So I'm just going to basically liter literally just squeeze the pumpkin right on top of it and then remove the pumpkin again add some hot glue and then place it and that way it's going to stay nicely secure and i'm going to do the same thing with the rest of them
and we're just about done with this one. This is such an easy project to do. It's really customizable to whatever color you want. But because we're going with a very minimal style, kind of crisp, fresh look, I just wanted to keep them just as is. I did add some Dollar Tree floors on the back, but look how beautiful and classy, very minimal look it has. For the next project, we are going to take this piece of paneling board that I got at the hardware store once again. It was in the scrap wood area, also 25 cents. But when you cut these, it does leave a lot of splinters. So I really want to make sure that everything is sanded down because I am planning on reselling this one. So I am going to sand it really, really well, dust it, and then gave it two coats of Rust-Oleum chalk pen in the linen white. Once that is drying, I am now going to take this Dollar Tree wooden pumpkin and I am going to remove everything from it. I had different plans for this sign that I am making and then I changed my mind but I still want to show you what I did in case you want to do this for another project. I removed everything from it, flipped it over and I did fill the little holes with some wood filler and once that was filled, I let it dry and gave it two coats of Rust-Oleum chalk pen in the linen white. Again, this is not what I'm going to use because I did change my mind, but in the event you want to recreate or do something similar, you can always paint it. Um, filling in the holes just makes it look a little bit more finished. What I ended up doing is taking some of this faux leather that I get on Amazon. I do have it on my Amazon store and I will have that link down below in the description box. I'm going to trace the pumpkin right on top. This is just so that I know where to place hot glue and that way it's not going to be like in a crazy spot or something. So now I have the silhouette of the pumpkin on the faux leather. I'm going to add hot glue and then I'm going to place the pumpkin right on top. I am now going to start removing the excess faux leather and I'm going to use a combination of scissors, the rotary cutter, as well as the X-Acto knife just to get as close as I can to the edge of the pumpkin. The faux leather was not wide enough to cover the entire pumpkin, so I'm just going to patch it up here on this little side with some of that excess faux leather. And I'm just going to hot glue, place it as close as I can so that you don't see as much of a seam, and then cut off the excess. I think it turned out actually pretty cool, pretty nice. I really like the way it turned out. All right, so I'm here just finishing up cutting the excess uh, faux leather from the edge of the pumpkin. And then it's time to place the pumpkin on the whiteboard. So once again, we're just going to use simply hot glue. That was sufficient. I'm going to place it all around the edge, exit in the middle, and then just place it to the right side of the board. Once it's on there, I am going to place a decal that I cut out using my Cricut. And it just says Autumn Harvest. I'm going to place it on the other side of the pumpkin, but towards the bottom of the board. I wanted to leave it just as is, but I just thought it just needed it just a little bit. Again, we're going with a very minimal style decor here, and I, I don't want to put too much, but I am going to place some of these florals. This is a combination of uh, floral picks that I got at, uh, I think it was Walmart and Dollar Tree this year. And I'm just going to place a couple of them facing to the left, and then I'm going to make a very simple bow using burlap ribbon. And I am going to place that on the other side of the floral arrangement, just hot gluing it in place. And then I did place a little pumpkin that came on a Dollar Tree pick and hot glue it 
to the other side of the floor and that's it guys it turned out super cute one of my favorites from today let me know what you think of it i love that i use the faux leather instead of just painting it and leaving it white i, I was going to add some shadowing to it but then i was just like "Ooh, i think it would look good with some faux leather but let me know what you think For this next project, I am going to take this piece of leftover drop cloth that I recently got on Amazon. Again, it is also in my Amazon store. I'm going to cut out a piece. It's going to be about 15 inches and about 20 inches long. I am going to, once I have it cut, I am going to leave the little frayed parts, like the edges, like that. Just leave them as is. But I am going to fold it in fourth, and I'm just going to cut the side that is already cut. That way it's going to have a nice straight edge all the way down. And it's not going to look wavy or wider in another, in you know, in one spot than the other. And then once I had it cut, it's time to iron it a little bit. It is a little wrinkled, so I'm just going to use my little mini press here from Cricut. I didn't want to get my iron, <laughs> so I just uh, ironed it with the little mini press, and that did the job. It's not perfect, but it did take a lot of those wrinkles away. So once I had it ironed, it's time to place these little dowels that I get at Walmart. I'm going to place one on each end and I'm going to fold towards the front of the drop cloth. So it's going to be like a little drop cloth sign. I'm going to hot glue the dowel and then I am going to place more hot glue on top of the dowel and then fold over the frayed edges over just like that. And it's going to kind of keep that dowel in there. I'm going to do that the same on the other side. The reason why I wanted to fold it forward is because I want to see that frayed look. But if you don't like that, you can always fold it back and that way you won't see it but I just wanted it using my Cricut uh, once again I am going to cut out this time a stencil instead of a decal and I'm going to place it on the drop cloth this one said but I love fall most of all which in my case is so true L fall is my absolutely favorite season of the year and so this was very applicable to my own taste so I'm going to place it towards the bottom let's see bottom right corner of the drop cloth sign here and I'm just going to apply it with some transfer tape and then I'm going to stencil it using a makeup sponge as well as that same amber color from Artisa that I used earlier to um, on the pumpkins and um, I think that it'll weigh it'll tie everything together I'm going to remove the vinyl. This is always so satisfying to me, especially on fabric. It's kind of scary because it kind of moves the fabric all over the place, but it always turns out fine. So, and, and then weed out any um, additional vinyl that is left. And then after that, it's time to add some jute twine to the top so that we can hang it on the wall. I'm just going to use a screwdriver here to poke a hole right underneath the dowel and about an inch from the edge. And I'm just going to thread the jute twine and knot it and i'm going to do the same thing on the other side and then once we do that we're done again a very simple very minimal kind of st uh, style decor for fall and i really love the way this one turned out
For this next project, I am going to take these little stacks of sticks. These are literally sticks from like outside. <laughs> However, I did not get them from outside. I actually purchased them at the thrift store a couple of years back and I've used them year after year. It was a larger bundle and I, this is all I have left and I'm going to use it here for this. We're going to create like a little swag for a top of a mantle or a console table. So what I did was I split the branches in two and then faced them um, to each side and then I'm just going to use some jute twine and tie it in the middle nicely snug and that way they're not going to come apart. This is going to be placed on the mantle here in my studio and so I don't need it to be extremely large so it's a perfect size for a small mantle or a console table and again we want to keep it very minimalist very minimal decor style but still have that fall autumn harvest look to it so once I had it tied in the middle I am going to make another one of those simple bows using burlap ribbon I'm going to tie it in the middle and then I'm going to tie it around the center covering the jute twine but also adding that detail in the center I want to keep this very simple, but I am going to place this little uh, pine cone pick that came as part of a larger pick from the Dollar Tree. I'm just going to stick it right in there. And I'm also going to take another one of those little pumpkins, cut out some of the stem. And then again, on the other side of the pine cone, just stick it in right in. No hot glue or anything. And it just stuck really, really well. And that's it, guys. Look how cute this little swag turned out. When you put everything together, it just looks so magical, so festive. It's just perfect for the fall. But most of all, it has that simplicity, that minimalist style that I really love, actually. And still has that festive fall look. So I know there's a ton of inspiration in this video, but I would love to know which one is your favorite or which one you'd like to recreate yourself or which style is your favorite. Let me know down in the comments. If you are visiting for the first time, welcome. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you consider joining our YouTube family. And if you are returning, welcome back. As always, I am going to have another playlist and another video here with tons more of inspiration for you. Make sure you click on one of these two thumbnails. Have a blessed day and I'll see you later. Bye.